So we took those, some shots as we went through the year. Here we were at July 31st. You can see a very nice, thick, full growth on this thing. Three weeks later, they were probably, you know, foot and a half taller. It's amazing how fast they grow in that stretch. So here's the 21st and a nice, you know, uh, they uh, the grow we were extremely pleased with. It really worked out nice. They finished up about five feet high. You can see they've almost were they were six feet apart between the rows. You can see that the rows just about grew into each other. So the plants were a good five feet across as well. Hmm. So now the only hassle with that is you can see this is September 27th. And notice there's not a whole lot of big buds on this thing yet. All right, well, welcome to the IHEP Hour. My name is Dave Crable. I'm with IHEP Michigan. IHEP Michigan advocates for wellness and people and the planet through hemp. And it begins with the farmer, Blaine. Uh, we're going to start with Mike Brennan first. Mike, welcome back from your short absence with the yep. power outage there in Ann Arbor. We're glad to have yeah. you back. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, it was a surprise to me. Like I said, just about an hour before the show, all the lights went out. And uh, so, well, what are you going to do, all right? Anyway, so I wanted to talk about there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in Lansing. And there's some legislation pending that the Michigan Cannabis Manufacturers Association is behind uh, that would really have a big impact on caregivers. Uh, and so I think that would also include a lot of folks in our hemp crowd. Now, my crowd is the above point three crowd, but still. Uh, what they want to do with the new legislation, there's three bills uh, that are going to be actually on October 5th. They're going to be a hearing on. They should be announcing the hearing dates and whether you can sign up to testify tomorrow, I am told. But it would reduce caregiver. Right now, your caregiver can handle five patients. And under this legislation, they would cut it down to one, which would immediately eliminate 40,000 people in the state that are getting medical supplies as in cannabis medicines and CBDs and whatnot from uh, the, the caregiver community uh, from the caregiver community. So 40,000 people would be left out in the cold. And a lot of these people have disabilities or other issues that makes it difficult for them to come into a, a licensed dispensary marijuana provisioning center. And now this is not done deal yet. And, and I, I suspect <laughs> the hearing on October 5th is going to be quite interesting because I know a lot of the folks that we've interviewed and talked to are going to be there testifying. And um, and uh, the, the, the theory is, although we can't get anybody from the Michigan Cannabis Manufacturing Association on the show to kind of talk about this theory is they're essentially trying to eliminate all the competition. The next thing they want to go after is in Michigan, you can grow 12 plants if you're a 21. And uh, th there's talk that they want to cut that down to only three plants. So they just want th what they're trying to do is drive everybody into their licensed dispensaries and eliminate the competition. So it's something to keep an eye on, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, that's yeah. going to be an interesting conversation to continue on, isn't it? Yeah. And tomorrow uh, we had Rick Thompson on the show, who is the new director of Michigan Normal. And uh, he, uh, he actually is one of my co-hosts as well. And so he was on the show and they said they should be releasing the information tomorrow, Friday. Um, and, and if you want to testify, you have to sign up in advance. Like you just can't show up and raise your hand. Uh, and it's only a 90 minute hearing. And I think they only allot five minutes or so per testimony. But that could still cover a lot of people. That'd be like 18 people testifying if everybody was in a five minute slot. But again, that'll be on October 5th in Lansing, which is next Tuesday. Um, the, the following uh, a week from this Saturday, October 9th, I got to look at my calendar in Ypsilanti. Uh, for those enthusiasts uh, that do want to get above the 0 0.3 level, there's a Canada Jam Fest. And uh, we have uh, we interviewed Jamie Lowell. Uh, who's uh, behind that, along with Daryl uh, Stavros. I could do it. I mispronounced his name twice now. Um, and so the, there's a big music festival. They're going to have entertainers. And for that crowd, if you're interested, you can also consume on premises. And they had to jump through a lot of hoops to get that permit. Uh, but they got that permit. And it's uh, all that information is in my marijuana report dot com. You can find it all there. It's only thirty dollars for a ticket to get you in. And then uh, the the folks that will be providing product, as it were, at the event are also going to discount it so that you can have a pretty good time for 50 bucks or so. You know, so 
And again, music, uh, uh, entertainers, all sorts of stuff's going to be going on. And this is in uh, Ann Arbor, Mike? It's in Ypsilanti. Uh, Ypsilanti. So, uh, Blaine, if you want to come over, you can stay with me, you know, and, and then we'll go over to the party. I'm just saying. I, you, you know, know, thank you for that wonderful invite, and I would love to do that, but I am booked that day, and I can't get out of it, otherwise I will. All right, they'll just send Becky over. She can have a good yeah, time. Okay. <laughs> That'll work. All right. Yeah, that's cool. All right, and finally, uh, a shameless plug on my part. Um, we're getting ready to launch a holiday cannabis holiday gift guide, which would include CBD products as well. And so we're just announcing that this week, it'll start on November 1st. We have uh, on Mondays, we have something called the Green Grab Bag, uh, which is you know, various products that folks can buy from the various folks that sell it. You know, whether it's CBD stuff or whether it's uh, THC stuff or paraphernalia, it doesn't really matter to us. But starting on uh, the first week in November, we're going to dedicate that to Christmas sales. And so for that hard to find person that loves CBD products or cannabis products, hopefully we'll have a lot of folks participating with us and that's not priced at a very high level. But you get a lot of publicity out of that. We'll be putting out eight newsletters before Christmas that'll include those products. And then we'll be showing that on social media. And my Facebook reach is about 40,000 people. So, uh, you know, we'll be sharing it there. And hopefully that'll drive some business to our advertisers. So that's my shameless plug. I had to slide that in, right? Oh, so you're going to be selling all kinds of hemp products and yep. you know, to benefit the Hero Project? Uh, probably a portion of that, 10% of that will go to Hero. Hero, for those who don't know, that's a 501c3 that somehow I got uh, hornswoggled into being president of the board, which one more thing that I got to deal with. And uh, so what we're trying to do is work with the, the hemp and the, and the cannabis industry to dedicate 10% of sales. That's what we're shooting for. Some are more, some are less. Uh, and uh, that money then would go to the 501c3, and most of that money uh, would go to veteran service organizations. They don't like to be called charities because the veterans don't want charity. They just want help, and so that money then will go to you know, fund a variety of things that these organizations are doing. Right now, we're in the process of vetting those veteran service organizations because we want to make sure that some of the big national ones Gosh, more than 50 percent of it goes to administration. So we're not into that. We're looking for like more like 80 or 90 percent uh, goes to the veterans. And then, you know, obviously you have some administrative costs. But so we're taking a look at which ones we're going to work with. Uh, and your guest from last week, uh, Jeff Cole, is dedicating a portion of his sales to the Hero Project. Uh, so we're getting that all worked out. He'll have an affiliate link on our website, which is HeroProjectUSA.org. And this is a nonprofit. I'm a volunteer board member, so no dough for me. But we're doing it to give back to veterans in a way for the cannabis industry, you know, to give back to veterans. And in Michigan, of course, uh, the dispensaries the provisioning centers as part of their MRA licenses have to do social equity. And if they work with this on the hero project, then that checks that box off and they're doing social equity. They're helping veterans. I mean, there's no downside here. So, uh, yeah, so lots of stuff going on. Um, hence my reason for taking my bike ride every day, because otherwise I begin to go crazy. Right. Exactly. So, <laughs> so uh, Mike, you know, who's going to be on your next week's show. Uh, we uh, promoted the can of jam this week. There's a really fun one coming up in Traverse City, uh, an event. Uh, I believe it's the following Saturday, the 16th, uh, the Masquerade Hall Halloween Ball that will be held at the uh, at Traverse City at uh, that big lodge up there, which is now suddenly I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name. Uh, so we're probably going to promote that. And then there's a couple of uh, interesting new projects that have come across my transom. And I just haven't had a chance to reach out to those folks yet to see if they're available. Uh, okay. So uh, we're trying to mix in a blend of event coverage because people want to get out now. I mean, who knows what's going to happen over the winter with you know all this COVID stuff yeah. and whether we have to get in lockdown again. So we might as well enjoy it now, right? You know, right. so. Well, you know, uh, Mike, uh, are you going to be, I hope you're going to be up on the 16th because that kind of leads us right into a nice segue. Uh, this actually, the 16th is going to be our uh, October uh, hemp networking event and it's going to be in Traverse City. 
Wow. And uh, yeah, and we're going to be uh, visiting uh, our guests that are on the show today. We're going to stop by their place. We're calling it uh, Growlers in the in the Grow is what I'm calling it. Oh, okay. Just up the road is Shorts Brewing, and we're going to try to get some of their little their little jugs and. Uh, Toast well, yeah, then Open you can harvest. go to the Masquerade Ball afterwards. It's at the Bear, yeah. the Traverse City Resort. They're the Bear, which is in Acme okay. or whatever it's called. Acme. I don't think it's Acme, but Acme. Uh, so, yeah, you could. And what kind of costume would you wear, Blaine? I'm kind of curious. No, I'm not sure what I would wear for that one at this point. Uh, uh, I have a lot of things in my mind, but probably things that I shouldn't talk about on the. Uh, <laughs> oh, OK. And, and and Dave, of course, would be a farmer outstanding in his field. So he'd be standing there with a hemp stalk or something. Right. Yeah, yeah. He could have the pitch yeah. Fork, yeah. yeah, I think that would be a good, good, good look for him, too. So Thanks, yeah, Blake. good. Hey, Mike, All right, I'm, wanna... I'm monopolized enough time. So back to Dave. <clears throat> oh, let's uh, blame you up. All right. Batter up here. Dave, would you uh, allow me to share my screen? I with did. You? You did. Thank you very much. So uh, this last weekend, I was able to attend. Come on. There we go. uh, The Illinois Growers uh, third uh, annual meeting that they've had. Uh, It was at the uh, uh, Chapel Hill Golf Course and Disc Golf Course. Mm. So uh, Becky and I uh, stayed here. It was uh, like a bread and breakfast. We had the whole place to ourselves, which was kind of cool. Um, and then on Saturday, they had the event. And what you're looking at right here in this picture, I'm sure everybody can see that, uh, beside the very pretty uh, hemp girls there, uh, that is a stalk of fiber that our friend Dimitri, uh, Dave, is growing. Nice. He brought that for for uh, exhibit there. So Wow, that is like big. A, it's got to be 16 foot. Uh, yeah, that's sir. huge. Yes, sir. Yep, Excellent. it is big. Yep. And uh, then the, they had some live music that was being played there in the afternoon. It was very, very good. We love that. Uh, and then uh, Fat Bottom Labs was there uh, with their CBD products. And uh, so they helped sponsor and helped uh, support that event as well as we did. Um, also, you see their Michigan down there in the end. That's, oh, here's their band right there. Uh, they were there. And again, I want to shout out to all the sponsors that help out now. Only us, but any of the groups that's doing this. You know, we're all working this together and and bringing this into the market, and we certainly appreciate the help that we get to be able to do that for everybody. So, uh, the two that are sitting there, uh, that's uh, uh, Jamie on the end, um, and then that's Cole, and they do a podcast called Chill Illinois. Uh, and I did a real nice podcast for the uh, I Have Michigan and also for the Neogen Tester that we did with that. Uh, and then again, we got the pretty hemp girls again, just sitting there. So a uh, great time was had by all. Um, we all went out and I've learned one thing about disc golf. Uh, it's actually worse than my game of golf. So um, we're going to have to you improve on that. Cards yeah. with disc golf? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I suck at it. Yeah. I'm pretty bad at it, but um, <laughs> so, but it's all right. I can improve. And you know something? We drove the card around. It's a beautiful day out there. Uh, and it was made, made a lot of new friends. And like I say, you can see we all had a lot of fun there. And uh, if you notice, those are the uh, uh, the hemp uh, putters that uh, they had made down there. So, by I hemp manufacturing. Yeah, yes, they were. Yes, they were. So this is our team of five that we had there. So um, excellent. Uh, were we were adult well beverages over. were adult beverages involved in that photograph as well, or not, not? in that particular photograph? But oh, there were okay. adult beverages available. Uh huh. Yeah, um, but yeah, so great time, great time with everybody. Uh, really uh, fun to go down there and and just commemorate, commemorate with everybody and have fun with them. So, huh. uh, and then this week also, what happened is the uh, U.S. Hemp uh, Roundtable had their virtual fly-in, and we'll have some more stuff that up on the uh, website. But what a great meeting! Um, they talked to uh, uh, senators and representatives and. USDA and everybody on that. And um, so that was a great, great day that we had there. Dave, maybe you can share a little bit more if you want to, or we can talk at the end of the show, but um, it's really yeah. great the work that they do. And, and we're proud to be members of USM Brown table and be able to be an advocacy for them. Um, again, we're going to put out the plea there. The safe banking act uh, did pass the house and is tied to the defense spending bill. And so we need now to contact the senators 
and get them to support that part of it so we can get the Safe Banking Act for both hemp and for cannabis both. So, um, but I think I've talked enough right now, Dave. Uh, anything you want to throw in before we get to our guests? No, but we, we will circle back on that. You know, we, we met with some Congress people and such, and it was interesting to me, the one lady, you know, when we talked about, you know, uh, you know, she said President Biden, she was direct, working directly with Biden. And uh, she said, White House staff, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, the. Um, that Biden wants to make cannabis a schedule two substance, which, you know, might create some other complications when we just are just bumping our heads against big, big pharma all the time. Um, and then the other thing she mentioned, and you know, for takeaways that I wanted to really think about is that they were going to table that because they wanted to work on the opioid crisis first. And it's like, we really need to get this education out here because cannabis is a path to fix the opioid crisis. So let's fix cannabis first. That'll fix some of these other problems. So uh, with that, why don't you introduce our guests? Cause they have some really cool, you know, these are some farmers that are doing it and they're fully vertical integrated. I'm really excited to hear from them. So it's been our, uh, our pleasure to uh, work with Lakeland Hemp and they are one of our sponsors with the iHemp Hour. So we want to take a shout Long-time out. Long time members. They were with us from the very beginning, I think. May have been. Yes, they have been. And um, had the pleasure, Becky and I had the pleasure of stopping up there a few uh, weeks ago and seeing their beautiful little grow they've got going on up there. It was very, one of the nicest ones I've seen. And uh, they seem to uh, have it going on pretty good with how they've been able to vertically integrate themselves and be able to uh, to turn a profit. Well, let's say, let's say make money. I don't know if we're turning a profit yet or not. You guys can tell us that, but we're doing that. But Dennis is a fifth generation farmer. And he's joined by his wife, Barb. Hi, Barb. Hello. And their son, Eric. Hey, Eric. Uh, to raise cherries and hemp on their 120-acre farm. <laughs> the original portion of the farm was homesteaded by Dennis's great-great-great-grandfather and has been passed down through each new generation since. Dennis supported his family's his farming habit, teaching mathematics, biology, and chemistry for 35 years in Alaska. He was also a Bristol Bay, Alaska commercial salmon fisherman for six years. Mm. Barb was a teacher also and a school administrator. Together, they raised two children, Eric and Teresa. Uh, Eric was born and raised in Alaska, completed his business degree at the University of Alaska, Anchorage, and worked uh, construction for years before joining Dennis on the farm. Together, they decided to begin growing hemp in 2019 to diversify the farming operation and hopefully support the future generations of the families on the farm. So thank you very much, you guys, for taking time. I know we're probably in harvest time right now, but wow, what a great thing to have you guys on the farm on the show today. So thanks a lot. Yep. Yeah. No, it was a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Blayton has way too much fun, though, I think. The guy's always out there playing someplace every every week <laughs> so you want to be me dennis is what you that's saying? right i think I, when if I, I wasn't my, me my next life i, I might take take you up on that right? okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so we we have like you said we went into a business in 2019 eric actually had some uh experience with the cannabis business up in up in um yeah. alaska which uh approved it years before we did. So he knew how to grow the plants and do the clones and make his own new strains and whole ball of wax. So he's been invaluable in our, in our journey here. But, uh, uh, but yeah, we've got about uh, probably about a uh, 20 minute uh, slide presentation. So uh, I'll get you up and then we can ask, do questions at the end and, and go from there. All right. right. Super. Click twice. Thanks. And then right over here. Yeah. If you click on full screen, there you go. Oh, okay. There we go. Now we're on. All right. So uh, we've got uh, the title we picked was uh, Lakeland Hemp, Our Journey to Profitability with a little question mark. As Blaine said, I'm not sure if we paid ourselves back from the, the, the first year we got in yet quite, but we're, uh, but we are making money at the moment. So we, and I'll look at the good and the not so good decisions we made and the barriers encountered along the way. And that first year, certainly produced a lot of interesting uh, barriers. We did, uh, we did get our, we decided probably in late March to get into the business and we contacted over the internet, uh, a, a group from Colorado and uh, they sold us uh, 
10,000 plants uh, and 8,000, I think, um, wife plants and a couple thousand um, cherry wine plants. And then once you get that, once that starts, there you've got lots of decisions to make. We, uh, you know, whether we put up a fence or plastic mulch or irrigation or going seedling seed seeds or clones. We did clones with the with the wife purchase that we did. Fertigate, are we going to fertilize with organic or synthetic fertilizers? And are we going to concentrate on biomass and flour? Now, the reason we got into the wife originally was it's a really good biomass and also a decent flower plant. So so we wanted we figured, you know, at the time we were looking at uh, what thirty-five thousand dollars an acre if all you did was grow the biomass and cut it down and hand it to somebody and they'd pay you thirty five thousand dollars an acre. Well we figured that might be half true. Well, it didn't turn out to be even close to half true by the time that uh, the, the first year crop was in. So we decided we were um, uh, we decided to fence in. So we had eight foot fences. We decided after we read a Oregon uh, farmer who planted his uh, thousand plants and lost eighty percent of them to deer the first night. They went through and either ate the the nice new plants or pulled them out of the ground. So we said, nah, after a $30,000 investment in those uh, clones, we decided maybe we want to make sure that the deer don't come be- and take them all off. We decided, uh, now he's, all he did was he irrigated, but he irrigated overhead. So he didn't have any mulch. And uh, he said that if you plant the plants, <laughs> that, uh, the plants grow so fast that uh, the weeds won't, uh, won't uh, uh, they'll just shade out the weeds. Well, Mm-hmm. I've grown enough plants in Michigan to know that that's probably not true. So I decided to put on mulch and uh, it, with an irrigation drip tape underneath. So there's, here's a picture of our mulch layer. We looked all over the United States, couldn't find one, finally found one in Canada. There's our fertigation irrigation system there that we, we used. And we used to end up using organic fertilizer. We thought we, we decided we wanted to grow everything uh, organic that we could. You have to grow for three years, but then you can get certified. So we just started out with the organic. This field had not had anything on it for. Dennis, could I interject? Was that film organic that you used for your? Yes. It's uh, film it's organic. Of, uh, one year, two years or permit. We did the two. We did two year. We weren't sure if we wanted to come back in and try to grow it in the same spot again the next year. Mm-hmm. So we picked a two year. So it was biodegradable. Yes. Excellent. Okay, cool. There's what 10,000 clones look like. There's mm-hmm. uh, a, a room full of clones. There's the lovely wife and my, and my mm-hmm. uh, son. Uh, this was, we could not find a planner as it turned out. So my son had welding uh, skills. And so he, we, we remodeled an old, uh, uh, an old uh, sprayer that we had, and he built this uh, planner, and we still use the planner to this uh, this day. So it is it has worked to work fine, but it's, it's two step operations. It turns out. Well, it looks like, like some mighty chair. comfortable seats there. Yeah. yeah, we got them really low to the ground. Uh, there were nice seats, and uh, so that you uh, you can reach the ground easily and uh, yeah. and uh, pack the pat them in and we had to we've got a, a hose up to a so we water and fertilize them as we plant them at the same time so it takes a two-man oh, operation to plant here was the battle between the uh, the hemp plant and the weeds now the plastic line that's where the hemp plant is the, the other lines are weeds so <laughs> yeah. the good thing we chose to uh, go with the mulch because the weeds were definitely a problem and uh I took a few more shots. We ended up using um, uh, mowers. We had enough room to even get a riding mower. We found one with 28 inch deck and we could ride down between the middle of the rows. So we took uh, some shots as we went through the year. Here we were in July 31st. You can see a very nice, thick, full growth on uh, this thing. Three weeks later, they were probably, you know, foot and a half taller. It's amazing how fast they grow in that stretch. So here's the 21st and a nice, you know, uh, they the, the grow, we were extremely pre- pleased with it. It really worked out nice. They finished up about five feet high. You can see they've almost were, they were six feet apart between the rows. You can see that the rows just about grew into each other. So the plants were a good five feet across as well. So mm. now the only hassle with that is you can see this is September 27th. And notice there's not a whole lot of big buds on this thing yet. It we kept talking to the guy that was doing our fertilizer, and he kept saying, uh, "Are they showing? The, are they are they showing the uh, hairs yet?" And we said, "No." And he said, "Got to be. Show me a picture." Not so. These things finally got ripe at August 10th. So August 10th, we had 10,000 plants to put in the barn. So there was a big problem because we had. I mean, it's already starting to get cold. We had snow by the week. October. Finished. Yeah, this is October. When October I say October 10th. Oh, you said August 10th. Oh, sorry, yeah, October 10th. So, yeah, I'd be confused there, you know. <laughs> yeah, that became a problem. So that was our, so we, uh, the next one's on the harvesting processing. 
too, so many plants and so little space. We had mm-hmm. a huge problem when it came to that because you're trying to take them out of the field. But, you know, if you're hanging them, you got to care for a couple of weeks before they dry. And that's in good condition. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we remodeled it a little bit and we built we had we'd already built these uh, we had these shelves made and we had these screens and we had 105 screens, I think. And we decided to, to, to try to make it a little faster that we would hand buck all of it wet. The first batch that we took in, we just hand buck them wet. We'd stack them on top of these screens and then we'd get, we had uh, dehydrators underneath one of these screens and fans everywhere. And we had a big fan in the room that was rotating the stuff out as well. Um, uh, but you, the moisture was unbelievable in those places. And uh, when we take them from there, so we, this was actually turned out to be the, the other way was to hang dry here. You can see us hanging and drying as we go through uh, and typically two or three weeks to hang and dry. And then we cure them on the rack still a little bit as we go through. We start out with a, this is our first a bucker. And we use this at the beginning, but you have to cut off the holes. The biggest hole is probably half an inch wide. So you had to cut every, every branch off of the actual plant in order to <laughs> run it through this machine. So that lasted about uh, maybe a week or two. And we finally decided hand, hand bucking was faster with all those plants we had to get through. So we ended really? up hand bucking pretty much everything. You can see the, the, the sacks there where the white sacks where, we, where the uh, biomass went. Uh, there's, there's our biomass uh, uh, that's hand bucked into there. And then we ran everything through. There's just behind that is the actual machine, the trimmer. We had a, a machine trim. And it would suck the excess, the small, the small buds, plus grinds up the, the leaves and everything and puts them in a bag. And then the bag we actually dumped into our biomass thing. And then the, uh, the, the trim came out the other end. That was, that was pretty, still pretty cumbersome as we, as we discovered going through this thing. There's where we put all of our, our stuff got stored. Um, the, the the bud was put into these uh, cure bags, the green bags you see in the background is that, there. Is that from hemp sack? Yes, exactly. That's yep. another high, high hemp member. Yeah, yeah those yeah. bags are awesome. Yeah, I love so those we, bags. We put them in there, and then we'd move them. We we ended up a uh, vacuum sealing one pound. We measure out one pound bags, vacuum seal them, and then we started filling these the, the round totes here uh, okay. for shipping yeah. and all those kind of things. So these are sealable sealable um, um, barrels. And so that uh, that worked out well. We were so we we're pretty happy. I mean, the grow was great. The we had some big problem with the processing just because we had so much material at the same time, and so that was that was a pretty big problem to overcome. And so somehow we either had to figure out a way to hang more, get more space to hang stuff, or to spread them out so that we had less stuff coming through at the same time, or plant less uh, less material to go through because that. That was pretty. Uh, that was a pretty bad situation. We threw out a lot of the wet biomass just because we were trying to get through more stuff, and we had no room for drying. So that first batch that we tried to do wet, that did not work. The biomass ended up going. We dried the actual just the buds on those screens, and uh, the biomass we ended up having to toss just because we had way too much stuff coming through, and we we're still trying to get the stuff out of the field. We finished like November. Third, I think we even had to go have them go back and test one more time because we didn't finish in the two week span that we had, um, so that we could finish up the field. So, uh, is- let, me, let me stop you. How many acres did you plant, Dennis? There were six acres, 10,000 plants, uh, 1,600 an acre, about with a lot okay. of uh, spacing in there. Here's where our big missteps were marketing. You know, that we when we started out, we actually figured, well, once we everybody signs up and gets their license, we're going to be able to tell all the growers that are in our area and where all the processors are. Well, that's not the way it worked. Michigan decided that they wanted to keep everybody's name secret. So they didn't share anybody's name or any of the processors' name with anybody. So by that time, the plants were already planted. So we were saying, well, you know, the, uh, our thing was this if we grow it, will they come? Well, they did not come. So we had we had to figure out what are we going to do now with all this stuff? <laughs> we still had all this biomass, and we had some we had some leads. We did some things to try to get some uh, get some uh, people out there. We went down to Ag Marble and saw their presentation, but they had pretty much like if you had to buy your clones, your fertilizer, you had to dry it through their facilities. If you did all those things through them, then they would they split uh, some of their uh, oil with you when they got done. That seemed a little onerous, so we didn't do that. We we found another vein somewhat, and then uh, um, 
we also discovered that machine trimmed flour that we used was couldn't get top dollar. We had some offers to buy our flour and we had it in these pound bags. This is actually a, a half pound bag, I think. But if you look close in there, you can see there's still a lot of leaves that were left on that thing and they will not pay top dollar, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that kind of product. So we had to open them up and trim them up again. And I mean, that was really took, took some time or else we had to sell it at a lot lower price. So that was all, that was all a big problem. Um, uh, so here's, so we did, we adapted, we decided that, uh, um, that we were going to do something else. And the other thing we did, the other barrier that we hit a big one was when we talked to the Colorado boys, they told us that they sold all their flour at the, at the state expos. They, they sold everything at Colorado or they tell us Las Vegas was a really, was a really strong one. So we thought, well, that's fine. We, we kind of missed our, the first one we did. I think your first one was maybe, was it in December? I believe uh, our first, our uh, first expo. January. Was, January. Okay. Early January must've been. So we had, uh, so it was, um, we didn't have all our stuff ready at that time. So we said, oh, we're going to focus on Vegas. We'll have everything ready for Vegas. Well, Vegas was like the third week of, March. Well, we know what happened the second week of March. COVID hit and all these places closed down. So now we had no place to, we were, we were going to hit that one. We we're going to hit the Colorado one. Well, so we had now had no place to sell our flour except for what we could find. You know, those connections are, are invaluable at these expos and we missed our opportunity there. So we decided we're going to have to focus on the internet. So we went uh, heavy into the internet. This is uh, some shots off of our internet, lakelandhemp.com. And we decided we wanted to personalize it. <clears throat> you know, most of the people, you know, it's, there's a big movement these days to have everybody have a connection to the stuff that they buy. They kind of like to know who they're getting it from. They know the people that's even better. So all that stuff is, was, we figured was a good, was a good way to connect with people. So we made it, we tried to make our, our internet personal. So we, we tried to personalize our website. We told our story, showed pictures of us, talked about the area. We have a very, unique area, Grand Traverse area is all this water as this picture shows. And we have some, so it's a really nice place and we get a lot of, we have a lot of people that visit this in the summer. It's a great resort area. So we tried to personalize our website and talk about why our product is good because of the place it's grown and in, uh, in this area. And then we, again, we talked a lot about the processes we went through and, and uh, meet the farmers was one of the signs of the website where we introduced ourselves as well. So that seemed to have helped when we learned how to, uh, to use uh, blogs. We've probably got, uh, I don't know how many blogs on there, but people read the blogs and then it takes them to your website so we could, we could get traffic through there. And the website is actually, the website's worked out really well. Every month, it took us a few months before it even kind of got started. And, uh, but then every month since then, we have, our, our sales have improved every year, every month. I mean, every month, continual all the way through the year. So that's, you know, that's, that's the big thing, why we, why we were uh, making a profit. We spent a lot of money on a website, but, uh, but we, uh, we got ourselves up on Google search enough so that uh, people recognize us. I think we're sold in 30 states now. We sold to 30 different states. So we're, we, most of it's Michigan, but we've got a lot of states. We also tried to make a great product and give great service. And uh, the key on the website is that if they love your product, they're going to come buy more. And then you're also getting new customers all the time as your name gets out there. So I'm sure that's why it grows. We have our products and packaging. We have all kinds of different things. There's the pound and the quarter pound and the ounce package. We also have in these little uh, it's little plastic uh, containers that you see on there. Those are biodegradable. Got one of the gentlemen that was on your thing earlier uh, makes these biodegradable containers that we sell our, our hemp in. Uh, and that's a, we make three and a half and seven gram um, uh, um, buds that we put in those containers. And you can see our a line of lotions and salves and tinctures and, and rolls. And we have a sample pack, which gives them two, two grams, but you get three different, three different samples, uh, each two gram samples. If you want to try test them out first before you buy them. And, and we try, we spend a lot of time trying to make our logo and our, and our, all our packaging look, uh, uh, look attractive. We also decided we were going to diversify. We tried to be a, kind of a one-stop shop as we you saw it back there. And our product page, there's our lotions and salves and tinctures and kind of cut off what we do, Keith and Isolate, CBD and CBG, Isolate and CBG, Keith, because we, we did Matterhorn uh, added to our, on our second year, we have a, a Matterhorn product plus some, uh, plus a few others besides. 
Now there's some of the roles. And, and then we started out with just two, two strains that first year. We added five the next year with, uh, with the Matterhorn and Cherry Blossom and Bubba and uh, Cat's Meow and Merlot. And so we have a pretty good variety of that. We still sell, we sell clones and seedlings and we still sell biomass. We go down all like down to as small as two pounds. We discovered a lot of people actually buy biomass. They want to make their own product. So they take the biomass and, and squeeze the oil out of it or, or, or use other techniques to get the oil out of it. And then they make their own tinctures for them for themselves. Mm -hmm. So all of this, so we kind of, we try to hit a whole bunch of as many areas as we can for consumables. Uh, and that's made a big difference. The cloning operation has been also good. We probably sell between five and 10,000 clones each each year also this next year we've already got a, a guy who wants to do 10,000 before we get started but this is our cloning room you can see the little light racks that we've got there and these and uh the mothers actually for next year are already here we've already taken we have to take them before they go to um before they start showing their flowers so you gotta you gotta pick your uh plants and clone them before so our mothers for next year we've already got a whole batch of them ready for next year this cloning room can actually hold 30,000 clones huh. in yeah, so we we can we can put a lot of a lot of clones in the spot. There's the we as soon as it get to after uh, the end of April, we, the days are already long enough. They're 14 hours of, of daylight basically. So you can put them from you can take them from your clone room out and put them in your. We've got uh, these hoop houses that we stick them inside. There you can see some of the clones and some of the mothers, the big plants for the mothers, and and uh, I think we might even have some. I don't know if this one's got seedlings, but we have a, a bunch of seedlings in this thing as well. There's our cat's meow mother plant. We sold some cat's meow and bubbas and wives and almost all everything we had last year, we sold as uh, as clones as well. Uh, so, and then we we found some strains that we were, we we're looking for strains that not only have top quality flower, but we wanted to spread out our harvest. So we're looking for some strains that actually come to full flower a lot earlier. Matter of fact, this year we already have, we've had we have uh, one of our new clones or one of our, our new new varieties already is been hung for two weeks. I mean, it's ready. It's already done. We're ready to, to start to, to processing it. So we really spread our harvest out now. So we start, we start like the 10th of September now, and we still run. The last thing is done is actually the wife, which is the very first thing we have. So we've spread it all out. Here's a, here's one of the varieties. The Bubba is a wonderful variety has, lots of very solid buds throughout the whole plant. A lot of times they just have them in the top. This one's a very good biomass, but also has good flower buds all the way through the actual uh, actual plant. And you can see it's got nice solid, it has good size. There's the, there's some of the trimmed buds that we got, got off of it. There's Eric with uh, the Merlot it turned out to be a lifesaver. This one, when we, we planted this one from seed, but it was must have been the first year of the seed because we had 13 different phenotypes. From from six foot five, like this one, the tallest one we had was over seven foot tall, six foot five. And this one's got purple blood, just an absolutely gorgeous bud in it. And down to about uh, maybe two feet tall. And there were, there were about two thirds were green and uh, a third and a third of them were purple. But the neat thing was they flower. The first ones that flowered, that first third of them uh, flowered in about middle of September. And then about 10 days later, there's another whole group that were all ready to flower and then 10 days later, there was a, the last group was ready to flower. So it'll, this, this crop, this plant alone allowed us to really spread out our, our, uh, our harvest season. There's were, a, they, were they feminized seeds? Did you have many males then? We have not one male in that oh, entire good. batch, even though they had all that things, they were feminized, but I mean, it was, that was fantastic. Huh. Here's that purple bud. Look at the, look at the uh, triclones in that thing. And they're huge. They're gigantic buds besides being uh, Absolutely gorgeous. So that's our Merlot flower. We all, this is the one we've already got in the barn and already cured and ready to ready to package. Look at the size of the super. <laughs> huge. Look at the size of that bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, we also here's another new one, the Hawaiian haze. And we got this was already that came that was very early. It's already we trimmed some of them out, but you can see the size of that bud. Absolutely gorgeous looking flowers on that one. Another one of our new varieties is the super, super haze. This is the only one still in the field right now. You can see the buds are, it's got, a, looks like a really going to have a really good set of buds. It might, there's probably a, within a week, these will be ready. This was probably taken four or five days ago, but they change really fast at the end. 
So we got those new four. Those are our four new. Um, you know, here's the last one. So look at this: the sour special sauce. Also, another gigantic bud on these things. These were all compliant. They're under the point three. Yes, exactly. Every one of them. Well, when we tested them and took them out of the thing, they were all under point one. Excellent. Oh, wow. that's amazing! Yeah. So job. this looks like it's. I mean, so these our new buds look like they're going to be really nice, and they're also very early. Uh, they're spread out, but the earliest bud we have now is that very first one that was had that giant bud on there. So that's really going to, that, that really helps us out because we really get a, a, a nice sprawled out and uh, season and we have really nice new quality buds. So that's been really beneficial for us. Dennis, um, uh, how yeah. about, how about your experience with MDAR coming out and, uh, you know, getting the tests and calling them and, uh, it was interesting. They were uh, really nice guys. Uh, a young guy came out and did it. Uh, he, although it was, we had him do the whole thing and we, we tried to do it early because you got 30 days now. So we figured, well, we, we figured we could get the last buds off by the 11th. And so the 11th was the day that, uh, that the, of September turned out to be the day they came in and we figured we'd get our wife off, um, by the, by September 11th, because we have now a lot some less crop of life. Um, and that's the last thing that's ready to go. So we figured, well, we'll try to get it in as early as we can so that we get the last one off when the last one comes. So that that was nice. And the only thing was funny was when it through, he says, well, we got to find, we have to get so many uh, ounces of the flower. So he was, if he got to the 20th or whatever his count one, he he might skip to the next one because it had better flowers on it. And I went, oh, that's, <laughs> you know, I figured, uh, I'm not sure if I like that idea. But in the end, it turned out everything worked out really well. <laughs> and how long did it take you to get the results back on your on your test? Because, uh, week eight days i think eight days yeah eight, days. eight, eight or nine days to get it back you need to talk to neogen right blaine yeah well, we, uh, actually uh i'm sure that next year they're going to be having one up there because they're going to want to test that throughout the i'm going to bring that machine up with me dennis when i come up oh, so. oh great yeah yeah that'd be great yeah we're still we're, we're actually trying to build a bucker here uh uh um uh, commercial kind of bucker to, to, to take care of. Cause we now just trim the, we just trim the best buds off the top and then buck the rest. And I tell you what, hand chucking, hand bucking those things is, is a tennis elbow in, in, on steroids by the time you get it. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. it ain't easy, no matter what they say. Yeah. Then exactly. yeah. <laughs> right. we, uh, We're right. We also, this year is the first year we decided we we're taking, we have our own, like, actually, I lost the picture on here of the, uh, we have a, a, our own uh, press machine. So we have a press room where we have a heat controlled and pressure controlled uh, press that actually allows you to squeeze the oils out of it. So we take, actually, we don't take our top buds, but we take all the small buds that we, that we trim out that aren't up, big, uh, up to size. And we use those in kind of a, a, a real fine mesh. And then you, you, you can press those things into oil and the oil just flows out and you collect the oil. So you can make a totally non uh, solvent product. So we're, we're, and we're looking to introduce the non product solvent here in, in uh, sometime this year. We started out, we did actually a total THC uh, product just because we wanted to make something that everybody could buy if it was going to be the first thing we could do to the truckers and medical people and everybody. Yeah. Get, would all would have uh, would have no THC in the product. So this was an isolate with no THC in it. And uh, so we started this product line and we decided, well, to get some exposure because it took so long and the last time to get them on the website, we decided we we're going to do some local stuff. So we we did some farmers markets this summer. Yeah, we Barb, uh, Barb and I did them ourselves just to see. We weren't sure if we could make enough money off them to actually hire a person to run them. But as it turned out, there's markets almost every day of the week at some place that's, you know, within 20 miles or 30 miles of here. And uh, you definitely could make enough money to, uh, to hire somebody to set in your, to, to run your, uh, run these stores or run these uh, farmer's markets. So this was turned out to be very profitable. We found out the biggest thing in these farmer markets is there's probably a third of the people that actually know all about him. There's a third of the people that give you a look like uh, you're some scourge of the earth, <laughs> you know, anti marijuana they think you're marijuana to start with and and then there's about a third of them that really know a little about it heard about it but don't really know so a lot of the stuff we do is is uh is educational and quite often people will take their stuff and and take a card or take this as a pamphlet that we made that shows the prices of all our stuff and tells our story again has pictures of our plants and there's a little story about our farm and the whole thing and uh, they'll come back the next week they're back and uh, you know I, I looked it up on the web about you know the 
products and I I'm convinced it's just, this is what I'm looking for. And they come back and buy your product. So it's, it's been, a, it's worked out really well for us. Whoops. Huh. If, uh, if it goes up to 1%, if the feds change that, is that going to impact your business at all? Make it, no, nope. make it easier. Make, yeah, it, make it easier. It, yeah. Okay. Make it easier. Yeah. No kidding. Because you're, you're, you're always worried about having a product because now you're not supposed to even have the one, you know, 0.3% in any of your intermediate stages, which is right. not really very realistic to because right. you're, I mean, you're taking it right from there and putting it in, you're diluting it into your, whatever you're, you're putting it in, but it's like, no, that's not really a, it's not possible to do it that way. Really. I mean, it's all part of the process, but you would, you'd want, I mean, you can, you can, as it's running into the thing, you could put it in dilution right away. So that it doesn't look like a product ever got above it, but your finished uh -huh. product is well within range, but it, it'd be, it'll make it a lot easier. Yeah. And you won't have nearly the worry about uh, harvest time. If you're going to have to remediate your crop, which means grind it up into powder basically, and see if you can sell that powder and that, you know, but uh, that's not really a go. Here's uh, another shot of the, the family. My uh, grandson's in this one as well. Uh, farmer's market. So that was a very profitable for us this summer. And uh, we'll probably expand that next year, but have somebody hired to go in and, and, uh, and uh, deliver the product. Uh, in, in your first year, uh, Dennis, did you have any issues with any part of your crop going hot? Did you have to destroy anything? No, we've, we've been very fortunate every, this is our third year now. And in no time did we have anything that was even, that was even close. I think. Huh. What kind of soil do you have up there? We have uh, it's a pretty uh, loamy soil. It's got it's got you know mixture of sand and it's really really nice. You, know, you can see how well the plants grow. It's really a nice a nice soil. We've got one little vein of clay in there, and you can tell uh, at the one end of the thing there's uh, probably a third of a row that kind of you can tell it's a little bit more stressed because it's not getting the nutrients easy as uh, as the rest of it. But uh, you will go to Colorado and you see all that looks like looks like red clay they got down there. I'm amazed that they can grow things down there, but they. They do a fantastic job. <laughs> hey, Dennis, have you ever thought about doing a, a little you pick up there? I mean, everybody has that kind yeah, of. Yeah, I know it'd be interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure the liabilities, but uh, yeah, I'm, but uh, it'd be fun. It'd be kind of a neat way to go because uh, people that that are buyers that want to come in and buy our plants when they they come up and take a look and go, wow, is there any way we can just come up and pick which plants we want to take on? Because you see the <laughs> giant buds and they smell. There's a just incredible smell. Well, you know, you make more money that way because they're still wet than you can do it by the pound. Yeah, exactly. You got yeah, some, perfect. I like it. Pound each when you get in there, right? Good yeah. Thinking. Good thinking, Mike. <laughs> but Dennis, we have a question about credit card processing. Uh, how, how do you get around that? We use Square. Square accepts everything. And we've got okay. a little Square that you plug right into your, you know, plug Chase. into your iPhone. And uh, Dennis, boom. Chase Bank and Chase Dennis. Bank is we've chose Chase Bank as our is our business partner. And they uh, the, they allow us to bank there. Really? Uh, there's still some question about where it goes. But, it, uh, you know, it's we, ours is we, we I didn't think any of the big banks were they're, they're still because it's still schedule one. They've been kind of shying away from that. Right. But not not Chase. Huh? No, nope, Chase, Chase. Well, I went into bank. Chase the first when we first went into business and said I wanted a business account, and they said, "Okay, for what?" And I said, "For him, our hemp fields. We're going to start Lakeland Hemp." And they said, "Oh, we don't do that." And I said, "Well, I just read in the paper you do, and I need you." And he, I said, "But I like your coffee. I'll sit here until you." <laughs> <laughs> and he said. Uh, well, we can't do that. And I said, I then show me the policy, your public institution. Well, we only have an interbank communication. I said, I'll take that. I can't give it to you. I said, I really like your coffee. I'll sit here until I get that. <laughs> oh, so man. I sat I there for you. about, they went back and forth and some lady from another office higher up came and said, well, we don't have to give you an account. And I said, for any reason, I said, that's fine, but may I have the policy? And, um, I just insisted on it. Well, they dug deep enough to see that Chase Bank does allow him. They had just done it the week before. So they called us back by afternoon. Let's set up the account. They had to go over our website. They actually, you could do credit card banking through them. That's what I was looking for, their e-commerce. But that, that's a, another whole hoop to jump. And I did that, but they were difficult to connect with. So we went to Square. Square had it. So we use Square now, but that uh, Chase does have it, and we've had it since we started the business. So, oh, good. Yeah. You just have to like their coffee. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so the last adaptation we did is we really, uh, it seems like, uh, especially even when the people that you're meeting, the, and a lot of, most of the people that are in those farmers market are surprisingly, there's probably me, uh, 25% that are locals. Most of them are people that are vacationing on there and they're just looking for something to do in the morning. And so they come through and uh, they really enjoyed learning our story and the whole thing. And a lot of them have been customers. One guy called me like four weeks later uh, after he'd taken some tinctures and said, wow, this stuff works fantastic. Can I buy a year supply? He says, I've <laughs> looked on your website, but I'm not good on the website. I don't know how to handle it. Can I just give you your credit card over the phone? I said, okay. So we sold it. So, so we've gotten a lot of customers through, through this uh, as well as, as what we make each time as we're in there. And we find that they enjoy the story. They like to know that the farm's been in the family for, for years, you know, so that, that, that so what year? Well, when did your great, 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 whatever, start the farm? 1860. Wow. James Buchanan signed his 80 acre homestead. And that so the farm was an 80 acre homestead. His the place that we actually have our hemp on was his son, his youngest son homesteaded that piece. And it, I think it was in 1892. So the, so the chunks of the farm that we have is, is 1860 and 1892. So both of them are centennial farms. So it's wow. You know, or a plus. Yeah. So I, I would recommend, you know, people that are looking at it, try to find everybody's got their own story and see if you can tell your own story. Because I, I think that's really helped us get a following because our website is very personal and we seem to, and people that call that buy our stuff or that's if they talk to us on the phone, Oh, we love your website. It's just, it's, it's so, it's so great. I'm, I'm just intrigued by the farm and the, in, you know, the past, the same place has had generations and people you're worried about it right now. You have to be able to survive on a 120 acre farm pretty much because the prices have gone through the roof here. Up. And it's now the last farm I saw go up was like $19,000 an acre. You, Holy cannot, cow. you cannot raise cherries or hemp either one and pay 19,000 bucks an acre for, for your, uh, uh, for mm. your land. It's just hey, another, another quick question. Uh, I'm just curious because a lot of people think they like, see a hemp plant and think it's a marijuana plant. And I know there's been some theft issues for some of the hemp farmers. Have you guys experienced that? No, well, we ha do have a gate that we can lock. But I mean, if somebody wants to get in there, they can clip the fence and walk through. But we haven't had any any problems. You know, it's a rural area. You don't. And we have you know, there's a lot of houses around our, our actual house is not there. But my sister. Uh, lives right next to it and we've got another guy that's that, that bought the original farmhouse that lives right there as well so so you got to, you'd have to be doing it and, you know it's right around a lot of people oh, okay so i so I, I would encourage people that again to tell tell your own story we uh, this is this is kind of our history and you know uh, stories a lot of times do their own speaking for them so i'm just going to run through here but we <laughs> fortunately we, we had pictures of every every generation uh, that we had, we could put on the website. So it's kind of neat that, uh, oh, that cool. we, we had all of our, all of our history, uh, already set up. And, uh, so the, there's our crew I'm, for some reason, we're the only ones out of focus. Uh, <laughs> there was sixth generation with my son and there's, uh, there's his lovely daughter, uh, uh, bagging up some of our one pound vacuum sealed bags there. She was, uh, she was, uh, taking working with us as well so everybody uh, like i said every everybody likes a good story there's our uh, our, our fund our our and off into the sunset uh, kind of shot over our hemp fields for the for the nice. day i was gonna blaine i was gonna throw a few of my i've got a whole bunch of beautiful uh, autumn uh, pictures i was gonna uh, try to encourage you people to come up because we have a we, the colors are just starting to turn and probably by then you'll be in, we'll be in full we'll be in full fall plumage so excellent it, it is awesome. gorgeous out here it, everybody it needs to come join us okay so uh, so uh, october the 16th we're going to start at lakeland hemp uh at about 10 o'clock yes and uh We'll have some uh, cider and donuts, and then uh, we'll have some, maybe some growlers a little later in the afternoon, maybe. But um, uh, but yeah, we're we're looking forward to coming up and visiting with you and seeing your operation, and everybody can uh, can look at your products, and uh, we're looking for a very good time up there with that for sure. So right. come on up and join us. It's a free event. Uh, after that, we're going to go to Traverse City to Michael Tui's, uh shop there. And uh, that we're going to cook out there and have some brats and burgers. And I'll, I'll bring my, I'll do my famous uh, hemp burgers on that day. So we'll make those and uh, just have a good time. And it sounds like, Mike, we got a party to go to at night if we want to stick around. Yeah, so. It's yeah. right, the masquerade ball. You yeah, know? That, was so, that, night. that was pretty convenient. 
Yeah, I mean, you got it all going. <laughs> we do and Dave will bring his award-winning, is it chocolate hemp balls? Is that what you want? I could. You know, I actually have yeah. some in the fridge right now. I ate a couple of, a little bit ago. We had some fun with that on a previous show, so we can't do that again. So. That's right. You already <laughs> worked that one out. We do. I think yeah. we're going to have, we're trying to get a, a guy who wants to demonstrate one of the uh, trims. We don't use, we hand trim everything now uh, we, so we can get bigger buds and, and have a, a better product when we get done. But he's got a, a, a trimmer that he was wanted to demonstrate. So we, we're, we're seeing if we can't get him to come out and demonstrate by uh, trimming a bunch of our uh, our bud oh. for it from there because we nice. should have a lot of available buds. So that might be another extra something to see when you get out there a little show and tell oh. i love it mm -hmm. all right nice. well, it's going to be a beautiful time come join us come have fun with us uh, we do this once a month uh some event we do somewhere uh for the hemp networking so this is our this is our october event so we're looking forward to it all right and you and you've got a major event coming up in lansing in january i'm setting you up here blaine go with it you know are, so. man right on a silver platter yep uh, so that's going to be our the expo uh, that's going to be in Lansing at the Lansing Center, uh, January 21st and 22nd. Now, the Thursday before that, on the 20th, we're going to have um, Food Chain ID and U.S. Hemp Authority is going to be giving their class on how to get certified uh, to get to be able to get that, that orange H seal that they're doing. So um, we're going to make that affordable. That's going to be a, a cost event, but it's going to be very affordable. And uh, anybody that's looking forward and going ahead and going to make the products, uh, whether it be the oil, whether it be the smokable flour, uh, those kind of things, um, you're going to want to look at being able to get certified because eventually the buyers and the consumers are going to want to know that you are uh, providing a safe product and that that's been third party audited basically is what it is. So uh, we're looking for a great time. Uh, we have uh, uh, exhibitors signing up now. Uh, it's on the website. Uh, there's a great list of speakers. Um, that we're going to have there available to uh, give a lot of great information. So, again, that's January 21st and 22nd in Lansing. And then Friday night, uh, Dennis, I'm sure you're going to want to enter your products into this, uh, will be the Hempy Awards, second annual Hempy Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we'll get the, everybody will put their products in, they'll get judged, and then that night we're going to have a, a DJ and have some fun with the dinner and give the awards away that night. So <clears throat> think of it like the Oscars or the Emmys, one of those kind of thing, only we're going to have a green carpet instead of a red carpet. Um, so and, and you'll be able to see Blaine in a tuxedo. Now that uh, is worth the price of admission right that may there. Happen. You know, so. Now last year, you know, I was dressed up last year too. I had my tuxedo on too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we're looking for a fun time and, and, and it'll be a great, great weekend to come out and enjoy. And uh, the magic happens, folks, uh, you know, at these events is where the magic happens. So that's where the networking, that's where you find out things. Um, it's just that's how it works and come on out and join us and have some fun with that. So. Well, Dennis and Barb and Eric, I want to thank you very much. Anything you want to say as we uh, kind of close up the show here? See, Barb no, poking, I, poking in from the side. Our question man is our question man is uh, my son. He's Q &A, you know, Q and A. He's a natural teacher, so. <laughs> 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 he's the guy who uh, searches out our new uh, new lines, and he's the guy that does all the cloning and the whole ball of wax. He's got the expertise in the thing. I'm not. I'm kind of the the, the, uh, the speaking head, but uh, he's he's the guy that knows the Everybody knows the do process. What good well. at, man. <laughs> do what good at. That's right. Everybody stay in their lane. That's right. I don't know where my lane is. And, uh, that's right. Everybody stay in their lane. So, all right. Well, uh, Dave, anything else before we get into the? No, sir. I mean, it's, uh, hours flew by. Yeah. Very yeah. informative, Dennis. Very our... informative. You got, you got quite an operation going Thank there. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. Good stuff. Appreciate the opportunity. Eric, everybody. Yeah. Okay, Dave, if you can you bring it up? Because you know something? I, I can't find my printout of the uh, recipe. <laughs> I've got it right here. Oh, you're you're awesome. You're just awesome. Hold on. We got it. We got it. We no, wait a minute. We got it. There you go. We can't do this part without the hat. Sure, they wanted to show. They oh, I, well, I don't know if Dennis could find it. Well, you can ask him. Dennis, were you able to find your autumn pictures? Becky wants to know. Oh, yeah, I've got them on my phone. You want me to I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, send some to you? I don't know if you can you bring them up. Yeah. They're on his phone. So they're on, my, they're on my phone. I just didn't put them on the slide. I was going to put them at the very end of the slide just to do his. Uh, an intro okay. to is uh, October 16th, but I decided in the end it was probably too long. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so uh, this week's recipe is a pretty simple one. It's a uh, balsamic Dijon hemp vinaigrette. Mm. 
So real simple to make. Um, <clears throat> it's hemp seeds and water and some balsamic vinegar and Dijon mustard and garlic powder and ground ginger, pure maple syrup. That's optional, but I got mm, it. Oh, it. Oh, I bet have. you don't want to leave that out for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, some organic misto. And so a uh, great, easy, easy peasy uh, way to make a great recipe and a great uh, salad dressing for you there. Um, so we have all these recipes up. If you look at the upper corner, it says hemp recipes up there. We have all these on there, and I'm not sure who the credit we need to give to this one to. But it's I'm not thinking me. this is Becky that said everything but your oatmeal. Okay. This, like <laughs> uh, this is by this Robin. Is Robin. That's who this is from. So, yeah. Thank you, Robin. So, again, I want to thank everybody for being on the show this week. Dennis, uh, Barb, and Eric, what a great time. We're looking for a really fun time up there. Uh, yeah, and Barb, we need some consulting on a hope, a how to open bank accounts. I'm going to have you come to Huntington with me. Maybe we can get them on board. <laughs> they'd probably be afraid of her, you know. Well, so you guys are unmuted. You guys are unmuted. You're muted. muted. Yeah. You're muted. Oh, yep. The there biggest deal is, I said, okay, I accept it. Can you please oh. produce for me your policy? <laughs> mm. Thank you. That yeah. Great well, advice. So I think the key is there, though, you stay for the coffee, right? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I drink a lot. I said, I really like your coffee, which, by the way, isn't that great. But I drink coffee and wait. And you Politics. You got to say things sometimes, you know. So. <clears throat> yeah. we'll All right. Well, uh, great uh, chatting with you and seeing everything going on there. Um, I'm not sure, Dave, who we got teed up for next week. Uh, yeah. That is oh, uh, Theo's going to be on next week. Oh, good. Adam's in fan testing. So, before we close, I want to close here with uh, oh, a to see our, uh, our list of sponsors. But I thank everybody very much for helping us out with uh, being able to put this show on and being able to uh, keep eye on Michigan folks. We're going to have a list of everything that we do and what we've done this year. There's nobody else that's working harder in Michigan and hemp industry to make sure that we're bringing the industry here and we're bringing everything forward. So, uh, again, Lakeland Hemp, Dennis Barb, and Eric there, thank you very much for that. Uh, Veritas Labs, USM Brokerage, uh, Kia is going to be here. The Adams Independent Testing next week. That's who's going to be on the show. Scott Colville, if you got any crop insurance questions, uh, Scott can answer those for you and help you out with that. Uh, I am manufacturing, of course, Dave and all his great products that he's got, got the frisbee up on the wall I see there in the, in the bags. Uh, the Emperor, that's me with the oil and other products will be coming out very shortly uh, with uh, more uh, animal bedding that we're actually bagging now instead of bulk, we have it in bags available for people. Uh, Neogen with their tester, I should have brought that up, um, but that's a, that's a way for folks to make sure they don't go hot, they can test throughout the season and be able to know when they need to call the state in there just so they don't go hot and lose that crop. And also U.S. Hemp Wholesale. Uh, it's also made by hemp. I want to thank them for all their contributions that they've been doing. That's Jeff Gallagher and group there. So thanks, everybody. We will see you all next week. See you next week. All right. Have a great week. Thanks.